Hi everybody. Hello. Children, teachers, parents, and all you watching in, this is Dinya Wada Live. I'm Desiree Falson. And I'm Victor Falson. And we are both teachers with the Dinya Wahda program created by BirdLife Malta and run together with the Education Directorate. Today, our subject is the senses. And although we don't know everything, we're going to try and tell you some of the things we know about senses in nature. It's a big subject, so we're only going to have to limit ourselves to very little, very few of them. But we try to hit as much, as man, as many as we can in the little time we have. Good. So as usual, you can ask us questions and reply to the questions that we ask you during the program. You have a bar on the right at the bottom. You can type in your question. We will see the question. You will not until we publish it. Mm -hmm. um, there was something else I wanted to say about that. The questions. If we don't have time That's uh, right. to answer all the questions, we'll uh, we'll give the answers in next time next week's program. Exactly. Okay. But in fact, last week we managed to answer them all, so uh, we're going to start uh, straight away with our with, with our, our subject for, for today. The subject for today. Yeah. Okay. Here goes. I'm just going to switch screens, so you'll see a pause for a moment there. And we switch. Okay. Well, okay. okay, yep, there we are. We start with the mystery object of today. This is something from nature, something natural, plant, animal, something from nature. But close up. But in close up. And you've only got a bit of it there showing, so you need to guess what you think that is. Think, send us your replies. If you want us to know who you are, make sure to write your name. We're looking forward to hearing you. We've just had the Maltese program. And we had some very creative answers, as well as some of them who got it right. And then we'll give the right answer at the end, towards the end of the program, OK? That's so that right. everyone will know what the mystery object was. OK, so a few more seconds. Mm -hmm. What do you think? And you type, would you like to check Rick, if there's some answers coming in? You're writing in the Q and A at the side. Only we can see the answers. Let's wait for the first one to come in. Have we confused them, do you think? Okay, so it's already starting. To okay, come great. So we can start the feature while you continue to write us your answers. Makes sense. Well, humans have five senses. Some people claim to have more, but we know that we definitely have the sense of touch, sight, hearing, taste, and smell. In plants and animals, they are a bit different. Let's start and take a look. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 what have you done there? <laughs> Sorry, you left the computer computer alone for a while and, oh, I had to, and I had to put something in there. <laughs> <laughs> and what is this anyway? Well, that's one, one thing I wish I had. I wish I had them, um, oh. I could taste with my fingers so that um, uh, you don't have to put the thing in your mouth. You can, uh, and anything you touch, you can have a good taste of it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good idea. Where did you get this idea I from? I got that idea from nature, of course. Like? Mm, guess what? Ah, butterflies. butterflies. Yeah, they actually taste with their feet, but we'll see that later we'll on. We'll talk about that more later. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, well, it. okay. It was fun. Well, it lasted. Let's start with some very interesting eyes. In the insect world, like this grasshopper, there are compound eyes. If you look at the close-up of this grasshopper's eye, you can see that it is made up of a lot of little circles. In fact, they are hexagon shapes, five sides. And that means that a grasshopper and other insects have thousands of eyes, not just one. Each one of them is catching light seeing images and sending it to the insect's brain. Now, why is that useful? Does it mean that an insect can see a lot? Well, yes and no. It doesn't mean that it sees detail, but it definitely sees a lot of movement because you've got so many eyes picking up uh, images coming from all around them. This means that they can see movement. And why is that, impo why is that important? Well, Insects are towards the bottom of the food chain. That means they have a lot of other animals that like to eat them. So if you're a fly 
or a bee or any other insects, you need to make sure that your predator isn't coming to get you and you need to see a lot of movement. And that's why these animals are very fast. Here, for example, we see a dragonfly. Now a dragonfly is both a predator and prey because a bird could eat a dragonfly, so it needs those compound eyes to see all around it. But also, it catches its food on the wing. So as you're flying, you need to be as fast as flies or butterflies that you want to catch. So your eyes have to be very good at spotting movement too. Now here are some different eyes in the animal world. This is a reptile, it's a chameleon. And it's got those lovely swivel eyes, not compound eyes this time, closer to ours. But as you know, chameleons need to catch their prey by staying quiet and still and hiding. Now, if you've got the right colors to match your background, you know that that's camouflage, and you don't want your insect prey to see you, then you can't be moving about. You can't move your head about like we do when you want to see something. Solution, move your eyes. Mm, I wish I had eyes like that. I could like, look at the back without having to move and set, check what students are doing at my, um, at my back. That's very useful for a teacher. I bet we all do wish we had eyes like that. But well, maybe they look a bit funny. So uh, chameleons can even move them in different directions at the same time. You can have one eye looking up, one eye looking down, as you can see in the, all these pictures. And now we come to eyes that are very, very, very good. This is a cat, as you can tell, and their eyes are slits. Why? The iris, that's the black bit in the middle, lets in light. Now, because a cat's eyes are so sensitive, they, they, um, they can really open wide to let in light at night. That's why cats in nature are mostly active at night. But during the day, they need to close really tight, almost close off all the light because they are so sensitive. And that's why you've got slits, very convenient. Now, here's another animal called a cat snake. For is, it, is it because it eats cats? What do you think? <laughs> it's because it's got those slit eyes. It eats it eats animals, yes, but it much smaller ones, like lizards, for Actually, example. It's a very small snake. Actually. It's very small, yes. And it's got those slit pupils again because it hunts at night. So those slit pupils, which have closed because there's the flashlight in its face, um, open wide at night to let in as much light as possible. And here we have the best eyes in the animal kingdom. This is a bird. And even if you look at the size of the eye of a bird, it's very much uh, it's very much a big part of the face that tells you you've got a very well developed eye over there. This is a bird of prey. It's a kestrel and the kestrel needs to hunt from the air. And it's not hunting things as big as a sheep, mind you. It's actually hunting things like lizards. And apart from being small and you're right up there, a lizard blends in with the background. So you need to have really good eyes. In fact, we have an expression, don't we? You've got hawk eyes. Hawk is the American mm. for falcon. Eyes of a hawk. That's right. Or eagle eyes. Or eagle eyes. That's because they have such good eyesight. In fact, here's another bird which needs good eyesight. It's called a bee eater, but it picks off insects in the air. Now, if insects have compound eyes and can see a lot of movement, then, then birds' eyes need to be even better and have to be fast. And of course, we know that they can maneuver. Now, from very good eyes, we go to eyes that can only detect light. This bearded fireworm lives in the sea. And you can see at its head, the head end is on the left, it can sense light, whether it's light or dark. These animals, in fact, come out during the night. It was probably just going back in when I found it. And as I approached, it did this. <laughs> Did you see that? All those white fluff, what's that? that? Those fluff are bristles and they can sting. It's ah, so a it's warning. A fur coat. Oh, fur coat. If it were a fur coat, would it look like that at the edges? Come on, if anything, gloves. <laughs> but no, it's a defense. And how did the worm know? Let's look at that, see? When it was calm, 
it, uh, it uh, bristles were in. But when I blocked the light, it noticed that I was coming close. It mm. may have thought I was a predator and it uh, took out its yes. defenses. It seems that it saw you. Huh? It saw me, exactly. It noticed from the light. Now, from animals that can detect light, we go to even worse eyesight. No eyesight at all. This little animal, it's a type of woodlouse. It lives in a cave. It's bright over here because the, the photo was taken by flash, but woodlice that live in caves are blind because they don't need eyes. It's always dark. And the, the woodlouse has other senses by which to get around. Now, here's another animal that lives in a cave, bats. We know about bats, we know they live in caves, we know they live in the dark, but what most people don't know is that bats do see. Can you see the eyes on this one on the right? Yeah, they're rather small. Exactly, mm. they're rather small. Unlike the ears, which appear to be huge. Which tells me that the ears are more important than the bat's eyes are. In fact, that's how a bat sees, so to speak. Have you ever heard of echolocation? That's how bats see. It's very different from us. They throw sounds into the air, a series of clicks and squeaks, they're called. And when these clicks and squeaks bounce against an object, they echo, they bounce back to the animal, to the bat. That's how a bat knows what's around. It keeps continuously clicking and squeaking, and when the, it receives in those wonderfully large ears, it, it takes the echo, the sound comes back to it, it can tell how big, how small, how far away the object is, so much so that they can eat insects in the dark. A bat can eat up to 2,000 mosquitoes a night. Here's a bit of a film. And our film starts with a bat detector. So this little instrument you see over here is called a bat detector. So we've been hearing it there, translating bat sounds into sounds that our ears can hear. Bat clicks and squeaks are so high pitched, they're so high that we can, our ears cannot hear them. But using this little gadget, it's a bit like a radio, we can, it can translate sounds into what we can hear. There's a bat and they're just coming out, that's why it's still light. It's just before sundown, and that bat detector is telling me that it's hunting. Oh, look at it! Did you see that? Ah, it did. It's summer, so it right. did. <laughs> it must have caught an insect. Probably, yeah. I must have found it. There it is again. And you hear the clicks getting faster. Of course, we can only hear them because we're using the bat detector, which is a gadget. Otherwise, we wouldn't hear that. Because our ears are nowhere like the bats, even in size. No, they don't, have, they don't pick up those frequencies. Mm, what a lovely animal. What That's a beautiful animal. That's not a bat, but it also uses echolocation. And uh, it, oh, what have you drawn now? Hey, I imagined what it would be like to have ears like that on a dolphin. But maybe they're not very, <laughs> not <laughs> very, very useful at all. Uh, no, well, forget attractive, not useful, because most of the time a dolphin is underwater. And if you've got flaps like those on the outside, they're going to make friction. Friction is something that does not help you move and, and a dolphin needs to be nice and smooth and glide through the waves. So as it glides through the waves, it actually throws sound. Again, squeaks that we can pick up through special gadgets. Now, how is it hearing if it doesn't have ears like that? It does have ears. The ears are under the, under the skin, just behind the ears. But it's not picking them up directly from the ears. The dolphin's jaw has a special bone that picks up vibrations in the water. Sound is vibration. Things in the water are always making vibrations. These vibrations will go into the jaw. The jaw will move and it will take this movement into the ear, which you can't see over here. In that way, a dolphin can hear. So, so fish, um, uh, do fish hear as well? They do. And fish are not mammals like the dolphin, but they also have an ear that is hidden to us. 
Again, so not the big flappy ones again. Again, because you're in the water, big flappy ones would stop you moving properly. And the fish needs to get around, doesn't and it? And they get water in their ears then. <laughs> yeah, in fact, well, yeah, that could be an advantage. Water is not going to come in this fish's ears. It can hear, and things that are moving will cause vibrations, which it can pick up in the same way. But fish have another thing. Most fish have what is called a lateral line. It's a line of very, very tiny hairs. These hairs move when things in the water move. They pick up the vibrations. The vibrations are uh, sent to the ear and then sent to the brain to understand what's going on around them. Whoa. Cool, lateral huh? Lateral line. I wish I had one. You're going to look like a very strange animal with all the things you wish you had. <laughs> And the tongues at the tip of my fingers. Uh, that would be wonderful. So what's going on? So what's going on here? This is... Did you hear that? Did you hear that? What are you making that sound? Let me show you that again. So that's a very strange fish. It's not that rare. It's called... A flying gurnard. That's right. It's called a flying gurnard. It has... Does it fly? Well, it looks like it's flying, it's in the water, but it opens these, these fins on purpose to scare away predators. And it's afraid that the predator will, uh, will eat it. So it just suddenly opens those wings with, with uh, colors like that, so it can scare them off. Now, the thing is, did you hear those booms, those four booms? That is the flying gurnard making a sound so that it will scare me. Listen again. And that's like a dog barking. It, it almost, yes, isn't it? Cool, huh? Okay. Reptiles, back onto land. Reptiles also like this lizard. They also have ears, but once again, they are under the skin. You can't see them. All they have is a little hole on the outside. Birds have the same thing. They have the ear, but we don't have a flap on the outside. In fact, humans have that flap on the outside. We can still hear without it because the actual ear is on the inside. And here's another animal that, that, that has the same thing. The insects also can hear. Now you might ask, birds? Well, that's obvious. I know why a bird needs to hear. Birds are always singing and chirping, so obviously they do need to hear. But why would insects need to hear? Let's take a look at this cricket. Look at those beautiful antennae. Now, we're going to give a guess where the ears of this cricket are. Where do you think they are? I think they're on its wings. Nope. There. What do you mean on its knees? On its knees. A cricket's ears are on its oh, knees. Oh, what a strange place to put your ears. So <laughs> to shut off its ears, does it have to kneel down? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good idea. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But I, I, don't, I can't think why they would need to shut off sounds because crickets make lovely sounds and they need to hear them. See. Listen to this. Have you ever heard it? Let's see. Okay. There. Have you ever heard this one? It's a night cricket, and there's the animal. They make a lot of sounds, especially during mating, and that's why they need to hear each other. Now, we move on to a new sense, feeling. How do insects feel the world around them? The animal, the insect on the left, is a moth, and it's got those beautiful, almost feather-like antennae. The insect on the right has very thin, long antennae divided into little pieces. But both of them hear, taste and feel the world around them through their antennae. What a lovely moth. That looks like a dry leaf. And that's exactly why it's that shape. Mm. Camouflage. Beautiful, isn't it? Perhaps the creatures that we know best with their antennae are ants. Look at the ant on the right. It seems to be perhaps poorly, something may be wrong. And the ant on the left is checking out her sister. These two ants must be sisters. And the ant on the left is using her antennae to check what's wrong with the one on the right, because that's how they feel the world. Let's take a look at this short video. The two sisters meeting, they're touching each other with their antennae. Once they, they know that everything is okay, that's my sister, they move on. 
Now these ants are touching the ground. They're checking for the trail of smell that their sisters left so they know where they can come and go. And every time they meet, here it is again in slow motion, they touch antennae. And that's how ants feel the world around them and other insects too. Let's go down below the waves again. We have a shrimp and a crab. Both of them use antennae for the same thing. But where are the smells? Well, in the water, of course. There's a lot of chemicals, a lot of smells. Most living things have uh, smells and they, they let them go in the water. And that's how shrimps and crabs and other animals with antennae can tell what's around them. They kind of make a map of the world around them by picking up the senses in their antennae, feelers. Oh, and now he has a very, very different. Oh, what animal. a cute little bunny. <laughs> Isn't he? This, is one, this one is still a young one. And uh, a rabbit's senses are very much like ours. Why? Because we're both mammals and this uh, rabbit is tasting. I think the plant on the right is um, maybe not so tasty because it's screwing up its eyes. Mm, isn't yeah, it? yes, I think the one on the left is the yes, It's probably the favorite plant. Strange because it's a thistle, but anyhow. And they taste with their tongue, through their tongue. They're seeing like us and they're tasting like us. Now here's an animal that does it very, very differently. A butterfly can sense the world through her antennae, but it can also taste through its feet. As soon as it lands on a plant, it can taste what plant that is. And how is that useful? Well, when a butterfly lays eggs, as it's doing over here, it needs to know that it's laying eggs on the right plant for their caterpillars, because caterpillars can only eat a special type of plant, special to that particular caterpillar. Here are the young caterpillars, still eggs and hatching. And their mother felt the plant, these are the same ones, in fact, the eggs were hatching, the ones you see on the left, their mother knew what plant they need because she tasted it through her feet. Now we've been talking about taste and, and smell at the same time. What do you think is going on over here? Uh, it looks like something very funny there, that the girl apparently <laughs> is eating the, her kitty's kibbles. <laughs> yeah, look at the kitty's face. <laughs> she's enjoying it, ah, but it looks like she's got a cold, doesn't she? Exactly. Mm. And that's why she's not tasting the kibbles, because she, she's mm. thinking they are uh, they are a cereals or something. Probably some Cheetos and or why Cheerios. Is that? That's when you, because when you have a cold, you can't taste anything. Does so, it happen to you as well? Definitely mm. happens to me. The cat seems to know. <laughs> not very happy about it, is he? <laughs> and she's having this break, break, break. Easter. And here's the animal that has the best sense of smell in, in uh, the animal world, the dog. With a long nose like that, a dog can smell 40 times better than we, we can. It's got so many nose bits that can smell because its nose is so long. And uh, mm, in fact, um, uh, some races of dogs, mm -hmm. some races that people invented, in fact, of dogs with very, very short noses mm. um, that look like maybe human faces, mm. they could be cute. But um, actually, they uh, they suffer quite a lot from um, from from nose problems, from smelling problems. Mm. What's a shame, because of course dogs uh, in I the wild. I meant to have, I meant I meant to have, have a long nose. That's all. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's, it's humans um, changing Scooby nature. Too. That's Scooby Doo, yeah. <laughs> Birds don't have a very good sense of smell, but there are some exceptions. On the left, we have a vulture, and vultures fly over very, very large places looking for dead animals. And dead animals stink, but you can, uh, if you're a vulture, you can smell them from kilometers away. The same with the shearwater. It's a seabird and it's the one on the right. They shear the water, fly over the sea until they pick up the smell of fish, dead fish, perhaps rotting fish, and even fish at the surface. So they need the, the eyesight isn't as good as the sense of smell, and that from kilometers away, they can smell, pick up the smell of their food, dindins. Flowers have pollen and pollen has a nice smell. And what better animals than insects to pick up that smell? You got it from their antenna. This is how insects smell. They see with compound eyes, they see the beautiful flowers and they pick up the smell from their antenna. 
Oh, here's an animal that we all know, but do we all like snails? I do. You know why? Because they're so special. They can do things that I can't. For example, oops, wrong way. They can see, but they can protect their eyes. At the top two stalks, they have little eyes. Their eyes aren't as good as ours, but they can tell if it's light or dark. In fact, snails come out at night most often. And the bottom two can taste, touch and smell at the same time. Wow. Isn't that cool? Mm. And like why? Your hand and your tongue yeah. and your nose rolled into one. Very. And but they can pull them two. back. <laughs> two, three. One, Four. two. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm getting confused now. Now, why do they need to do that? Well, they need to know what plants they're touching, whether it's good to eat or not. And here's another thing. They need to know the way home. When ants pass over the ground, they leave a slime trail. Some people may say, yuck, I don't. I think it's quite fascinating. You know why? Because a, a snail with those two feelers at the bottom can find its own trail and find all the way back home. It's like it lays out a map just by touching that scent trail. Uh, by the way, other snails can find the same trail and it can lead them to food. I think that's really cool. Now, you may think that birds beaks don't feel because they look like hard things just made like teeth, you know, hard things to just take the food in. But not all birds. If you live and you find your food in the mud, then you need to be able somehow to see in the mud. Now, eyes can't see through mud unless you have X-ray vision, which <laughs> they don't. But the tip of the beak is sensitive. So as they're poking about, right, like that, the tip of the beak can feel whether it's a stone or a softer body like an animal. Once they realize, they pick it and eat it. And there it is. And there it is. <laughs> and here we have a reptile. This gecko is feeling through its skin the warmth of the bulb underneath it. It's almost as though it's on a solar bed or it's got an electric bank blanket underneath it. Isn't that convenient? Oh, yes, that shows that the uh, um, reptiles feel through their skin as well. Well, I guess just like we do, no? Yeah, exactly. And because, then uh, mm -hmm. when, when we speak of touch, um, mm. people just throw a hand as we did, in fact. Mm. But actually all our skin feels uh, heat and cold and pain. So touch is all over our body. Exactly like the same reptiles. With reptiles. Yes. And here's another animal that touches, but this time it's from the tips of her legs. Eight of them, and notice they're not in the same direction. Spiders that, that spin webs keep their feet all around, 360 degrees, in a circle. Why? So that when an animal lands, can you see that the legs are touching the strings, the individual, the, those separate strings of its web? So when an animal lands, they will know exactly where it landed, because it has moved the tip of the leg that's touching that particular string and it will go quickly before the animal manages to get free. And there's dinner served again. Now here we go down into the sea again. Oh, that's a plant this time. Absolutely not. It may look like a plant, but that's actually an animal. It's called mm. an anemone. It reminds me of the film Nemo. Exactly. This mm. is an anemone. Where the clownfish hides in, among the tentacles. So no? if you watch Nemo, you know that an anemone has senses in its tentacles. They, they uh, feel when an animal touches them, tiny animals that pass through the water, they can feel it and they will sting it so that it is paralyzed. And but there's a tiny shrimp right there. Oh gosh, I hadn't seen that. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Could be in danger there. It could be. Stung. It could be unless it has a special protection. Uh, I'm not it sure. Has a special trick to avoid mm -hmm. those things. Yes. yes. So even these things like this that don't even look like animals have senses, and then there are senses which we absolutely don't understand. Fascinating. How do birds find their way over hundreds of kilometers sometimes, tens of kilometers sometimes? How do they manage? Is it because they are navigating? Do they have GPS inside them? Do they follow the Earth's magnetic fields? Do they follow the sun, the moon? We don't know these things, but there are senses there, sense of direction, which we don't have. And here's another sense we don't have. Snakes don't have very good eyesight, 
but they can tell exactly what's about them if there are animal prey because of that tongue. That tongue can pick up warmth and it can pick up body warmth. So by sticking out its tongue like that, it is testing to see if there's anything warm. And if there is, it means it's an animal. And if it's a small enough animal, then it will go for it and there's dinner served again. Now, on to the, the world of plants. Ah, so this is a plant this time. Now, this is a plant, but we don't know a lot about plants as much as we do about animals. Still, there are some things we do know. This is a vine and vine let out what we call they grow tendrils, like long, thin fingers. And these long, thin fingers, tendrils, can feel. If a tendril rubs against uh, something solid, like uh, a pole in the ground, it will twist around it and hold on to it like fingers would. And why does it do that? And that way, the plant, the vine, can climb up. Ah, because the vine is a climber. Okay. Exactly. It's not strong enough like a tree, so it needs to hold on to things. Mm. So it doesn't use glue or, or, or claws or thorns or hooks. No, it uses tendrils. Yeah, it's like tying a rope. Or, or fingers, holding on with fingers. We know that plants feel cold and we know that plants can tell if it's light or dark because plants drop their leaves in autumn and in winter when it's cold. We don't know how they do it. We don't know which part of it. They don't have a brain like ours, but they definitely feel the world around them. Like, for example, this pine tree, which has just got a pruning. Some of its branches were cut. Now, when this happens, the tree makes a kind of glue. It closes off the cut. You know, like when you get a cut in your skin and you have blood and water to close it off. This tree does the same. It's a kind of glue called resin. Now, notice that the resin is not just anywhere, it's where it was cut. How did it know? Where is its brain? We don't know. But how did it know that where to make the resin? Amazing. We do know that plants feel light because there are some flowers that open during the day and close at night. What is it inside them that's sensing this? And here's one of the greatest mysteries of trees. When you have a woodland of trees that are the same, we know that they communicate. They get messages across through their roots. This is a beautiful oak woodland and through the roots, messages are passing. We know these things because we see the effects. We don't know how they do it. Mm -hmm. There's still lots of studies being carried out. About Who knows? Maybe animals. you will one day yeah, grow up, you'll yeah. plant trees and you'll study about and you'll tell us. Become a biologist and, or a botanist. I look forward to, this, to hearing your answers. We need people like that. Definitely. Like that because there are so few of them. And the more we know about our world, of course, the more we can protect it. That brings us to the end of the feature. And these are all the people we would like to say a big thank you to for allowing us to use their photos. Of course, a thank you to Steph at the office for her support. And now we come to the mystery objects. What did we get, Vic? Uh, we've got lots of answers. Uh, we've got um, butterfly wings, white flower, a cockatoo or another Ooh. bird, <laughs> the wings of a moth, nice. feathers, flowers, shells, coral reef, Gosh. the protective sense of a caterpillar. Wow. <laughs> but we soon got the, the right answer. Yeah. And from, uh, the first correct answer was by Abigail. Ooh. And the answer was a fungus, a mushroom. Ah, there it is. It was the middle bit called the, what do we call those, Vic? Filaments, I think. Filaments, yes. That's where the mushroom produces its seeds. They're called spores They're in tiny, mushrooms. Tiny, tiny, like, Very it, tiny. like dust. Like pepper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. Well done, Good. everyone, for trying. Great. <laughs> well done, all those, especially those who guessed what it is. And the creative answers. We just love those. Oh, yes. I so here's for creative answers. Last week, we, we put this photo in our game of uh, what caption, what are they saying? And we liked all the answers, and here are some that we chose. Thanks for all this work on party. Um, whoever wrote this, that was Marianne Gregg from Mosta Primary B, um, imagined that it was all the snails saying hello, and they gathered there to say hello to the big snail that had just arrived. Love that one. And then we had uh, Rafael Seidsekel, who imagined that it was a kind of punishment. Stay here with the babies. 
those are not babies of the same shell, but of course, but look, like like stay here with the little ones, as, as you would do perhaps in class if you were given a punishment, maybe. <laughs> and then we also had um, many versions of many types of uh, wording for this answer. Is there space for me? And this one, who worded it short and sweet, was Ginevra Verde from Calcara Primary. We said last time that we're going to get your captions in Il Huttafa, that's our Young Members magazine. And something that we are noticing is that you like to ask a lot of questions. We think there are a lot of you who love nature and who have so many questions. One thing you can do if you have questions is become a member in our club. It's only 10 euro per year and you will get many answers. It's a magazine about nature. You will get six of these in a year. You can write to us, you can email us. And if you become a member, there's the website, birdlifemalta.org. Type that in and find join. We'd love to have you. Nature would love to have you. You'll be helping nature at the same time. Here's our game for this week. Uh, that's not a Maltese animal, is it? Of course it is. That photo was taken in Malta. Ah, I'm so not we, have, sure. we have starfish here. We have obviously. different kinds of starfish, wow. and this is a beautiful red starfish. Is the red ones like this? Oh yes, I've seen a, uh, I've seen a few. Not not too many, but I've seen a few. And this starfish is well. We imagine it's a game, right? We imagine it's saying something. The way it is there, almost as though it's got legs and a head and arms. It seems to be saying something. What do you think it's saying? Send us your caption ideas on the link that we will upload on the Microsoft Teams page on Dinya Wahda. I remind you that our email is dinyawahda at birdlifemalta.org and that we have a Facebook page. Please like us and check if there are any fun games and competitions or things that you want to play with us with the games that we put up over there. Let me just pause a minute while I switch back to our live transmission. That's us. And here yeah, we are. Yeah, I was busy still answering some questions. <laughs> Good. We love that you answer. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for uh, all the lovely comments that you pass and all the encouragement. And we hope to see you next week. On behalf of BirdLife and Dinya Wahda, I'll say thank you and goodbye. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.